Hello, this is the Human Centric Leading Vlog. My name is Eleni Palas, and today we'll talk about the Magnificent Inspiration Society. The Magnificent Inspiration Society is the, the North Star. It's what good looks like in terms of team cultures. Now, in another video, we talked about the Magnificent Compression Machine, all these pressures that are created in today's workplaces, some people call them toxic, some people call them, you know, difficult, whatever the terms you use, but there are workplaces where there's more trouble than really creative and open uh, work environments. The Magnificent Inspiration Society is the antidote. It's, as I put up on the picture here, it's created by specific elements that are very different from what exists in most workplaces today. And what I want to show is that they're finite. A lot of leaders who are responsible for transforming their team cultures are overwhelmed. They're thinking, how will I ever transform this dysfunctional, this difficult, this chaotic work environment to work in a more functional way? And so this is why I drew this out. So to show that there are very few elements that are foundational. And once you create strategies to work at each of these foundations, you will start to notice differences rather quickly. We start with the base. The base is based on a new assumption about what it means to be human. It's the one new thought we talk about in human-centric leading, which means we see that humans are not only thinkers and doers. We think, we do, we feel, we adapt, we respond to, you know, contexts, etc. And so we're kind of always in the flow. And we have to include our whole selves with our emotional needs, because that's been excluded in most workplaces, we integrate them as data, not to like create emotional chaos, but we start to use emotions as data at work. So we see people as whole with logic, with emotions and unlimited potential. Unlimited potential means that we always have capacity to grow from wherever we are currently. We've never met any human who can't learn new languages, who can't make more friends or relationships, who can't work in more increasingly complex projects because we humans have an unlimited capacity. Now, this is the lever for change. When you start to see yourself and others as a whole being, you start to feel better, don't you? Just think about it now. You're not a cog in a wheel. You're not replaceable. You are valuable. You're a human. And you step into a role, a leadership role, to affect change. You don't step in there to help you feel good about yourself. You don't step in there to prove to others that you're smart and capable. You don't step in there to grab things that you need to feel good. You step in there to lead, which means to give, to be of service to others, bringing people together toward a common goal. So that's the most important piece. The second you'll see on either side that you look at is the behavior. The next element is how are we in a team going to behave together in order to achieve our goals? So what ways of interacting are we gonna have? also called rules of engagement. How are we gonna to behave to each other? How are we gonna deal with problems? How are we gonna deal with criticism and judgments and blame? How are we going to deal with chaotic or uncertain or unplanned events like a pandemic or climate change? How are we going to deal with the challenges and the opportunities we face? And those are involved in a specific way that people behave. So instead of labeling someone as difficult or smart or capable or incompetent, we start to look at behaviors. Do they exhibit the behaviors that we respect on this team and that we know we need to get us and make progress toward our achievements, toward the goals and the outcomes we want? That also includes replacing criticism, judgment, and blame. Because if you see in another video, I talk all about the magnificent compression machine. And one of the elements that is very destructive or set of elements that are destructive in our workplaces are the use of criticism, judgment, and blame. 
and we label people and people then become like this defensive and that creates a lot of the problems we have that falls away in the inspiration society because instead of using criticism judgment and blame to correct people to punish them for mistakes they made to discourage them from making mistakes or let's say raise the bar on their attention to their work or create accountability we don't need that criticism judgment and blame creates a lot of defensive behavior it doesn't achieve positive things in our work contexts so we pull that aside and we start to define the behaviors define what quality is define what success is define the fine line between success and failure where we don't want to go where we want to go and we make it very clear to everyone whether they're in an organization for the long a long time or they're newcomers it's clear to everyone what are the ways people will interact to contribute to and cultivate high quality work adapting to different contextual pressures and dealing with things that come our way like challenges and opportunities the next on the other side is the hierarchy we may not be able to change the way we're organized within an organization yet we don't have to have this power over hierarchy that is toxic because no human wants to be in an environment where someone else has the power over their well-being power to fire them power to humiliate them power to demote them power to uh, embarrass them the power over their well-being and mostly being being fired because that's our livelihood in this in this world money or the ability to earn money to live so people resist the power over structure because of this principle we humans we like to be in charge of our own wellness and our own well-being there's an enormous amount of research that shows this and we know it intuitively so we change the hierarchy some people change you know eliminate hierarchy and put something else but if we want to keep the hierarchy we use ro roles roles a role based view so that means we each have different roles but we're equally important so everyone takes on the roles that they want according to their abilities their experience their knowledge their education their wish and desire to contribute in a certain way and they take on those roles and they know that they're not more important or less important than anyone else because an organization is made up of a group of people needed to achieve goals if there are extra people they could be moving to other teams or other organizations there are no need to be extra people there are the specific number of people needed to achieve goals to be able to deliver products and services to co other customers yeah on top we have then success metrics we may not be able to change all of the success metrics yet we can always augment them success metrics we've used so far really always deal with money profits in a profit orientation company um, funding and budget in government and not-for-profit so we're always looking at money now money is not the only element to tell us to give us information or data points as to how well an organization or team is doing we need to know about how the people are doing for example, one client asked, how would I know how all these thousands of people are at work? How am I supposed to know? One easy way is to have one question survey. <laughs> if you want to make it really easy and fast, you send a text to everyone on their mobile phone and you ask them one question. For example, what is the most common one feeling you have when you're at work? Anonymous. Hopefully people are honest and you start to get data within probably an hour and you see the data points if it's frustration that's a problem for you if if most people feel frustrated most of the time at work they're not going to be able to give you their best they're not going to be able to experience their best if they feel elated great I'd love to see an organization that gets that result but good in other words you'll get some feedback and you can always understand how people 
show up at work. And in the past, people would say, well, it's their fault. Well, am I responsible for how people show up? Of course not. What we're responsible for as leaders is what type of environment we cultivate. So we humans are very, very influenced by context, the environments we're in, the circumstances, the situations we're in. And if our work situation is always stressed, always critical, always focusing on punishment, punitive, critical, judgmental, everyone's blaming each other and everyone's like this, it's a totally different mindset people show up with because they have to. People are always looking at subconsciously or consciously of how to survive. We have to survive criticisms, judgment and blame without feeling that it affects our personhood. And most of us band or merge our identity with our jobs, merge our identity with our fields of study, merge our identity with our titles. And so a lot of people are really sensitive to anything that's being said about them. And that creates a lot of emotional drama. So the, the, the success metrics start in a magnificent inspiration society to look at more than money. It looks at how are people doing? What is their daily or weekly experience at work, which will indicate whether they're working at a high level of performance, medium or low. So in, ad in, advance, in addition, we add metrics for nature. In our world, we know very well, we're on a finite little marble, that blue marble we saw when the astronauts went out into space. We're in a finite space and the way we're producing things and consuming them and working is, is going to outpace our ability to survive on this planet. So we start to think when we humans feel better, feel good, feel resourceful, feel respected, feel psychologically safe at work, then we can think of other people. We're not this anymore. We're more open. And we can start to think, how are we doing as a team? How are we doing as an organization? How are our customers doing? How are we relating to nature? Can we make our processes and ways of producing goods and, and offering services that are eco-friendly? Can we improve what we're doing and how we're doing it? And so the metrics become different ways of guiding and defining the culture that's being created. And so when we also look at, you see the little person in the middle, they're resourceful, they're open. They're like, oh, I'm here because I'm here because I got through interviews. I decided to work here because I care about the goals and the mission of the organization. And I'm here electively instead of doing it just for money or doing it just to survive. I'm here because I care. And that brings a whole self. And so these elements you can see on this diagram are all interdependent, bi-directionally uh, supporting each other, each one helping each other to cultivate and to maintain a sustainable way of working that brings people energy, energizes everyone, engages everyone, brings energy up instead of the legacy industrial model that squeezes energy out and drains people and they quit. This is life enhancing. So it's where it means we're designing work environments that's good for humans. Humans need certain needs, certain things. And I'll, do, I'll discuss that in another video. But we have certain needs. I'll highlight them now. Need for respect. Need for safety, physical and psychological safety. Need for belonging need for variety, different things to do so our minds are engaged, growth and contribution. And when we design our workplaces around that, we start to see immense change and change we could never believe was possible. And I've been there, not only as a coach, but as a leader facilitating change. So I'm encouraging you to study this image, look at it. What do you already have in your organization? Some of these, all of these, what could you add next? What would happen if you start using the mindset of everyone is a whole being? 
a whole human thinking, doing, and feeling. What if I talk to them in that way, knowing that they're a whole being and they have unlimited potential? What if I speak to myself? My self-talk is that way. I am also a whole human. I cannot do everything. I cannot have answers to everything. I curate responses to the challenges and opportunities of the team and organization. So take, you know, take some time to think about it and reflect on it. And please feel free to, to practice things and work. You, you, you can certainly call me and we can work together to do it. And you can start on your own.